Hey YouTube, good morning. I'm gonna do a, a quick drive and do um, a similar test that I've done before, uh, except for this is gonna be unprotected right turn. So we're gonna get a little bit of B-pillar footage. Here's a snapshot of where the B-pillar is mounted on my car. And then we'll see if these unprotected rights. Here's the first one. Uh, you guys are familiar with these turns and these streets. So it needs to creep and look. And there's a wide open view, no problem. Easy peasy, no traffic. I'll try to do a, a handful of these, about three each. Okay, here's take two of the same turn. Stopping for traffic control. Autopilot creeping forward, checking for visibility. And it's wide open. Approaching the intersection again. Stopping for traffic control. Zero feet, creeping forward, checking for visibility. There's a car coming, it needs to stop. All right, it did stop. Okay, now the right lane is clear. It's in a good position for this right turn. It should go to the right lane right now. Uh, looks like it's gonna wait. That's okay. There's another car coming. Uh, if it, okay, now it needs to wait. Don't. There we go. Don't go. <laughs> he kind of tapped his brakes a little bit. Okay, now it's clear. It should proceed. That was a good example with some uh, oncoming traffic, and it, and it stayed right where it needed to be and had a good angle. Okay, this is a good example of bad routing. So I'm at an intersection, there's nobody behind me, so I'm just gonna stay here for a second. The route wants me to go back around and then take a right turn here. I guess it's not recalculating. But this route projection is, is a very good example of, of it wants to do a U-turn, and you can see it going through multiple iterations and calculations. Um, I'm gonna guess that if I engage the autopilot, <clears throat> it's probably going to say it can't do it. So let's just see what happens here. Please keep your hands on the wheel. And now it's projecting a U-turn and all sorts of different things. And it's kind of stuck. Um, the, the visualization ought to be able to tell this is an easy right turn, but the mapping has not updated. Uh, I, I don't know how to update the map other than hitting cancel and then reinitiate. Uh, but there's no doubt that the car is not moving. Autopilot is engaged. It wants to do a U-turn, occasionally go straight. If I tap on the accelerator just a bit, that's me feathering the accelerator, moving the car. Now it's locking in on a, on a U-turn scenario and it, it's turning left. So, so you can see the car and the, and the wheel is turned left. And now I'm just gonna let it proceed because it's wide open here. Okay, and then it decided to go straight. And okay, I had to take over there at the railroad tracks. Okay, so I think that's a really good example of how routing and visualization have to help each other out. Uh, in that scenario, and now you can see my route is recalculated and it's got me coming to the right. I could probably engage um, autopilot here and it, it'll do just fine. So, I know we've done a lot of discussion on right hand and left hand unprotected turns and how sometimes the, the route might be the easiest solution to get around a really difficult turn. In that situation, 
the route just was, was kind of stuck. That wasn't a better way to go. I was actually out of light um, at that particular time. But the route had not updated with the GPS or, or whatever reason it hadn't updated. It could have been LTE connectivity, um, all sorts of scenarios. The visualization was still trying to make the route happen rather than kind of make what to me as a human was visually the obvious uh, decision. I thought that was a, a good example. Okay, I'm coming up to this intersection again. Uh, you can see the route has got it correctly mapped. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm on top of a railroad crossing mark. Um, and it's, you can see the railroad crossing and it used the railroad crossing as the stop line rather than, sorry about that, rather than the actual stop line for the intersection. So, I, I, you know, I could probably tap the accelerator and it'll move forward, but it's using a incorrect stop line. I'll snapshot that. Tesla and I have talked about this quite a bit. Um, it's the it's the way it's interpreting the white paint line of the railroad crossing marking as the stop line, even though there's another stop line up there, and it is actually marked. You can see. Well, you probably can't see in this contrast, but there's a, there is a line there. That is a misidentified cone, which is actually for a marking that's across the street. Uh, that isn't a cone. Okay, we got the green light, and now it needs to go to the right. The blinker is on. And it went into the middle lane, interestingly, when there was an oncoming car. I don't think I would have taken that intersection. All right, we'll set that up again. All right, here we go again, trying this intersection with the railroad paint marking. It's a red light, stopping for traffic control in 50 feet. And once again, it, it stopped right on the mark. So it can't turn right on red because it stopped at traffic control. In this scenario, because we know what it's going to do. I'm going to tap the accelerator and tell it to continue. Now it's feathered forward and it's got the right signal on. And now here we are on the creeping right on red. Autopilot creeping forward, checking for visibility. There is some oncoming cars. It can probably see them with the B pillar if it's looking very carefully. Okay, it went for that. It needs to go. And it went into the middle lane instead of the right turn lane twice in a row now. Um, I'm not sure why it did that. Okay. Okay, here's a third scenario. Uh, this is a stop sign and there's a fence here to the left which blocks the visibility if you're not all the way forward. Uh, so right now I cannot see and it needs to creep. And now it's creeped to a good location with no traffic. And it's going to the center lane again. And now it's going to the left left lane. I, maybe it was going to the center lane because up here on the other side, no, I don't know why, because we're actually turning right up here. So there's no reason for it to be in the left lane right now. All right, let me set that up uh, again. Okay, I've got it uh, re-engaged in the exact same scenario as we just did. Fence on the left, needs to kind of creep up to look clearly left here. Creeping forward, checking for visibility. All right, there was a car that it got to see. There's another car coming, but it's in the middle lane, so it needs to stay in the right lane if it goes. And that was me bumping the uh, friction just a little bit. It was very, very slow to go into that right lane when it was wide open. It wanted to go into the middle lane, I think, is why it was going so slow. It could have just kind of accelerated in the right lane as, as I would have done. Okay, we'll set it up again. Okay, here's the third scenario, third scenario, third turn. Um, interestingly, you can see this route projection is going to the right lane and flickering to the center lane. I'm now looking at that 
for the first time. Okay, it's clear to the left, no problems. And interesting, look at that. That path had predicted the right lane and it stayed in the right lane this time. That was perfect with no cars coming. I'm not exactly sure why it was trying to go to the middle lane. I'm gonna have to do that one more time. Maybe the fourth time's the charm. Okay, fourth attempt. So this time, let's see. It looks like it's projecting the right lane here. It's a little hard to tell, but it is projecting that it wants to go into the right lane, but flickering to the center occasionally. Okay, clearing to the left. All right, there's no oncoming traffic, so it can proceed wherever it wants. But look at this. It, now it says, oh, and it changed its mind, and it went back to the right lane. So that center right lane uh, decision logic is a pretty important one uh, when you're trying to squeeze into oncoming traffic. I, it, it ought to be just defaulting to the right lane. I don't know why it, it's confusing between the right and the center. Okay, five times. That's a little ridiculous for one scenario. I don't know, but I was trying to do right unprotected turns, but now I'm intrigued with this lanes, lane logic because that almost is more important to me. Here it is again. It's going right to center, right to center, right to center. All right, there's traffic and it needs to stop and it did. Okay, and it's not clear yet. Okay, it is now clear if it wants to go and what does it want to do? This time, lock solid on the right lane. That's what it needed to do the whole time. But by wanting to go into that center lane, it was adding more complexity, especially with oncoming traffic. The route only has it going right once we cross the bridge up here. So there's no reason for it to be in that center lane. Um, and it's well-marked roads here, so that's not the issue. Okay, so that's probably enough for today. I'll, I'll try to put this together in a coherent uh, video. We had a little bit of a conversation about routing and how the routing uh, can create confusion that the visual system can't solve, like with that U-turn at that one stoplight. And then I think we introduced some uh, unprotected right-hand turns with a little bit of B-pillar footage. Hopefully the B-pillar footage came out okay. And then uh, lastly, I think we opened up kind of a new conversation about uh, lane determination when it's making a turn and I'm going to have to start looking closer to where the projected path is going because if that projected path is taking me somewhere that I don't think is safe, I need to know about that before I let it go. And jumping into the center lane in a right turn with uh, highway speed traffic is, is not what I would want the car to do. All right, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please uh, add some comments in the section below and uh, give me your thoughts. And if you saw anything in the video that I didn't mention or, or talk about, that's always appreciated. Have a great day.